Welcome back team, I'm Jacko and today we're going to be talking about and showing you how to get started with your breath holding based on the techniques and teaching of the Oxygen Advantage. Before we get started, if you haven't yet subscribed, this is only my second video, um, so click subscribe if you haven't done yet, if you're interested in improving how you uh, feel, how you move, how you breathe and how you perform, then uh, there's going to be more and more content coming from me on this channel about that. So you might notice compared to the first video, this is, Mrs. Jack was like, it's a bit bland in the background, get something, get something else. So there's a plant and that's my, the last, last shirt I had from uh, when I retired from my head injury. That's a, that's a different story. We'll, we'll do a video on that later. But breath holding, um, why is it important? Why do we want to do it? And then how do we actually want to do it according to this, the, the teachings of the oxygen advantage? Well, one of the big things with the breath holding is that we are trying to change our tolerance to CO2 building up in the blood. When we are able to tolerate higher levels of CO2, so a hypercapnic, that's just a fancy word for high CO2, then uh, we get better exchange of oxygen from the blood into the cells when we're working. So that is going to allow us to um, train better for longer, more efficiency of, of transfer of oxygen to your cells where it's needed for energy. It's going to help you with your training, with your conditioning, with your running, whatever the training is that you're going to do. And it's also going to help you with your recovery after training, but as also in between, if you're doing like sets of things or repetitions or stuff, it's gonna help you with your uh, your recovery after sessions as well as in between and actually during those sessions um, themselves. So a couple of things before we start. Number one, if you're pregnant or if you have any underlying health conditions, then you shouldn't be doing strong to medium uh, breath holds. Second thing is, our breath holds with the oxygen advantage are always done after a normal exhale. So, and that'll be from the nose. So we are gonna breathe in through the nose and breathe out through the nose, then pinch the nose and hold the breath. Why do we want to do it this way around? Why don't we take a big breath in before and hold that air? Well, we're trying to create this, um, this adaptation where as you're holding your breath, oxygen in the blood goes down because it's going out of the blood into your cells and CO2 rises. So we get this hypoxic, which is a fancy word for low oxygen and hypercapnic, fancy word for high CO2. We want to create that environment because that helps with that efficiency of uh, oxygen, leaving the red blood cells, uh, hemoglobin releasing its affinity to oxygen in the presence of carbon dioxide in the blood to allow uh, transfer from that blood into the working cells. That's what we want. It's not about just having uh, lots of oxygen in the body, it's how efficiently can we get that oxygen into the cells where it's needed to produce energy. So that is why we do our breath holding with the oxygen advantage after a normal inhale and a normal exhale. So with that normal inhale, it's not like trying to take a big breath in to prepare for it. It's just a normal breath in through the nose, a normal breath out through the nose. So equally, not trying to get all of the air out of your nose, just a normal relaxed breath out of the nose, pinch the nose, and then we start holding our breath. Now we want to build up gradually our ability to, to do this and to start with, after about 10 seconds potentially, your diaphragm might start spasming or your neck might start twitching and that desire to breathe uh, will, will, will come in. And it's important that we build this up gradually and you're gonna be able to feel the benefits of that like anything with some progressive overload. So don't, even when you get good at them, at the beginning of the session, always do a few repetitions where it's like 10, 20, uh, seconds or steps, we'll talk about that in a second, we're counting our actual steps um, as part of our breath hold, but we wanna build up to this slowly, don't just go for a max out one straight away. Um, as time goes on, the receptors in your brain that dictate when you, uh, when you feel that stimulation to breathe, when the diaphragm gets a message from the brain to breathe, it's not measuring and looking at those levels of oxygen that are dropping, it's looking at the levels of CO2 that are rising. When we're used to over breathing or breathing too much or our breathing efficiency and patterns are not or less than optimal, then our sensitivity to, in the brain, sensitivity to carbon dioxide increases, meaning that our tolerance to it like goes down. We haven't got good tolerance to it. So by exposing our body to high levels of CO2, we change that adaptation. We reset that sensitivity to carbon dioxide to better, more healthy levels. So it's going to help you with your training effect, but it's also going to help you with the day-to-day breathing pattern so you can start to breathe a bit lighter and a bit less often so not over breathing so it's great for performance but it's also going to be great for how you're breathing in your day to day so in terms of actual breath holding what we're going to do obviously being stationary is going to be easier than if we start to walk and then we can increase the pace of our walk into a jog and eventually into a run 
We want to build this up gradually. Start with some very simple breath holds. Just play around with it to start with. Of like hold for five seconds, hold for 10 seconds, and just get used to that feeling of discomfort. And um, when I first started, I couldn't do 20 steps. After 10 seconds, um, I would start to almost like panic. Uh, and we need to just get used to that mentally, how that feels. Now, very different to the bolt score where we take out um, willpower, we're actually going to try to push these into a medium to strong breath hold. Okay, so start off with just like stationary, but as we build up, we can start to change the metabolic demand of our, uh, of, of, of our breath hold. So the metabolic demand as in like, how hard is it for me to be stationary compared to if I was walking, compared to if I was jogging, compared to if I was running. So, um, you know, firstly stationary, and then after that building up to, to some light walking, uh, just at a pace that feels comfortable for you. We want to try and get towards 60 steps, almost like 80 to 100. 60 steps is in line with our 25 second um, bolt score. If you haven't seen the video on how and why to take your bolt score, I'll put, maybe it will be, if I can try and get it up to there, of how to do your bolt score and do it effectively, check out that video. Um, I'll put it in the, I'll put it in the, uh, the notes uh, below as well. Getting towards a 25 second bolt score co aligns with doing 60 steps. I did want to be trying to get to like 80 to 100 steps, which when I first read that and heard that um, in the auction advantage being taught by Patrick McKeown, and I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. I can't even do 20 at the moment. So it is possible I've done 120 now. Um, it's taken me 18 months to build up to that and I made a lot of mistakes along the way. And I'll share um, in a separate video how uh, the things that I've been doing to help improve that. Some important things and tips then from me to help us get through uh, and get the benefits of these breath holds. So as I said, the, the logistics are normal breath in for the nose, normal breath out for the nose, pinch the nose. Now I like to really encourage people to smile. Smile when you do your breath holds because it's going to feel uncomfortable, particularly around your chest or around your abdominal region where your diaphragm is. When that starts to get a message from the brain, when your CO2 has gone up, it's going to be like, we need to breathe, we need to breathe, we need to breathe. And you're going to go, no. It's actually okay to breathe. You're just being a little bit oversensitive. I'm going to smile, relax into this, and enjoy this weird feeling of discomfort. And it's going to feel weird to start with, but over time you will be able to relax into that, and that's when you're going to see some real differences. So don't fight against it. Smile and relax into it. The other thing is then, as you go through, just understand it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I always say that to people when I'm working with them. And um, if we take your blood oxygen saturations. Um, when you start to drop down into the 80, sort of 80 to, to 87, 88%, that's like training at about four to 5,000 meters of altitude. It's, it's a great tool of being able to train like altitude training, but just doing it in the comfort of your own home. So we actually want those levels to drop, but it's when you start off, you'll probably, you'll drop from like 98, 99% down to like 93, and you'll feel like, oh, I can't possibly go any further. But trust me, as you build up gradually, you will be able to do it. Making sure, obviously, like I said before, if you're pregnant, no, don't push it like this. Um, you shouldn't be doing breath holds like this. And if you've got any underlying health conditions, you also shouldn't be. So just a disclaimer on that. Now, as you get used to pushing through a little bit and trying to improve the time and the uh, steps that you're able to do, you're going to find that um, how, how hard should I do this? Like when, when should I be able to let go? So. Your, the two key things of when you finish your breath hold. Number one, when you finish your breath hold, let go of the nose and breathe in through the nose. Do not let go of the nose and just breathe out through the mouth. We are trying to take nitric oxide that's building up in the nose into uh, the upper airways and into the lungs. So we do then harness that by let go of the nose at the end of our breath hold and breathe in through the nose. And your job is to try and minimize and you're breathing on the way in for six breaths through the nose, rather than <gasps> taking big breaths in through the nose. Six minimal breaths in through the nose, and after those six recovery breaths in and out through the nose, your breathing should be back to normal levels. That's your dictator of how hard you're supposed to push it. Okay, so after my 120 steps that I've managed to build up to, letting go of the nose, six, trying to control those for six, taking the least amount of air in as possible, and then back to normal breathing after that, not completely out of control and feeling like you're about to pass out or faint. That means you're going too far. So I hope that's given you some, some tips and some help on how to start to introduce breath holding into, into your training, into your practice, into your breath work. It's a great tool to change 
our, our sensitivity and our tolerance to CO2, which is a good thing. We want to improve our tolerance so we can tolerate high levels of CO2 in the blood so that we can get better exchange of blood, uh, uh, a better exchange of, of oxygen from within the blood, red blood cells into the working cells of the muscles when we are training to help us with carrying on going for longer, being able to uh, recover faster as well. There's a lot of other things that we can do with the breath holding and I'll go into some more detail in another video but I think that is plenty to get us started with our breath holding as ever. If you have any questions or any comments put them in the, the comments below. I'm more than happy to help and talk in any more detail. If you're interested in any of the online courses that I'm, and small group work that I'm doing um, the details for that will be below. You can email me David Jackson Fitness at gmail.com i'll put that in the in the in the notes as well in the description and then finally if you haven't subscribed yet and you're interested in breath work and improving how you breathe how you feel how you move and how you perform then uh, hit subscribe wherever that is it might be on one of these things uh, hit subscribe and i'll see you in the next video